here's the headline. Uh, California's Assembly Bill 5, which was intended to shut down independent contracting, what most of us call freelancing, is now going national. It devastated hundreds of thousands of businesses in California, the trucking industry, freelance designers, photographers, wedding planners, translators, you name it, destroyed hundreds of thousands of California businesses. It took effect in 2020 and immediately created just total chaos in the economy. I'll just take one example, truck drivers, about 200,000 of them, the kinds of people who move goods from California's massive ports, Long Beach, Oakland, LA, San Francisco, that move all that product coming over the, the Pacific, that move that stuff by truck out of the California ports, those guys were immediately disrupted. What the law said it was doing was making sure that companies didn't hire as independent contractors people who should have been full employees, people who should get all the regulation, all the encumbrances of being an employee, all the protections, as the Democrats like to call it, and none of the pain. Well, the fact is, is that most people who are independent contractors actually choose that. They want to run their own businesses. They are small business people who provide services to others. And AB5 just destroyed that. Now, it was aimed originally at Silicon Valley companies like DoorDash, Uber, Lyft. But that same year that it took effect, the Assembly Bill takes effect in 2020, within 11 months, the voters repeal its impact on Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash after a $200 million campaign by those companies to exempt themselves from this bill. So who's left? All these other small business people, again, the photographers, the truck drivers, the wedding caterers, you name it, all of these people who don't have the cash to fight back against Sacramento, they're still covered and their businesses no longer allow them to perform these freelance services. They have to be hired by the companies for whom they do business and many of these companies simply can't afford the cost of a full employee they use for just a few hours per week. So long story short, AB5 was supposed to change the gig economy. It didn't. Then it was, it, it was imposed only on these other independent contractors, these smaller businesses. And the Department of Labor at the U.S. government looks around and says, you know what, that's a pretty great idea. We're going to make that go national. So imagine you're a, you're a small company and you need, uh, you're need you a newspaper. You need a photographer or a writer or somebody to you know, toss papers on driveways. You typically, if you're smaller, you don't bring on a full staff. You hire people to do this job or that one part-time right? Because that's all you can afford. That's how you start a small business. This law said, no, no, not fair. Those people need to be your employees now. What if the company can't afford it? Too bad. You're out of business. Who benefits from something like this? Is it these freelancers who are working as photographers and newspaper delivery people or writers for a newspaper? No, uh, they don't benefit from this law. They chose to be independent so that they could work for a variety of different kinds of clients, sometimes just part-time. So the law made it more difficult for those people to find work. A lot of these little companies went out of business as soon as Gavin Newsom signs the bill in 2020. And the companies that it was really targeting, the gig economy in Silicon Valley, they got out of it. The logic of the bill was that every driver for Uber and Lyft and DoorDash, that these people were being exploited because they weren't being given all the employee protections, you know, the, the health insurance, the uh, unemployment benefits, et cetera. But what it didn't notice, AB5, was that this allowed many people to do a thing part-time that they didn't want to do full-time. They didn't want to be employees. I talked to a young woman who was driving for Uber only in one situation. She was a college student and had to commute one hour into the Bay Area. So in the morning, before she went to school, she would get on the Uber app, find somebody to ride with her, pick that person up, drive into the San Francisco. She would go to school, drop the person off. And she paid for her gas this way. It gave her free commutes all the way into the university and all the way back. Well, that was wiped out temporarily by Assembly Bill 5. I say temporarily because Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash famously, within one year, spend $200 million to get a ballot initiative qualified. And in late 2020, Proposition 22 eliminates AB5's impact on the people for whom it was primarily targeted, Uber, Lyft, DoorDash drivers. They're all exempted. Why? Because they had money. Other exemptions were handed out to people who were favorable to democratic politics. My favorite is, in fact, the newspaper industry, which said that AB5, first they said, AB5 will be a disaster for our industry. And as soon as they started editorializing against it, Lorena Gonzalez, the author of the bill, said, you're exempted. 
This no longer applies to you. All these newspapers turned immediately to promoting the benefits of Assembly Bill 5 as long as it covered other people. So it was a very, you know, a federal judge later described it as just shot through with favoritism and political grift. He called it biased, he said there was a conflict of interest in all the exemptions that were handled out, handed out. But the most important thing is that Assembly Bill 5 killed hundreds of thousands of small businesses, truckers, graphic designers, wedding planners, you name it, people who were too small to fight back but who wanted to remain independent contractors because it gave them flexibility, it allowed them to serve multiple clients. All of these people have lost their business in California. But none of that deterred the Biden administration, which as I say, in March, is rolling out roughly the same sort of deal nationwide. So part of the problem with both Assembly Bill 5 and more so with the Department of Labor law that will be introduced in March is that it's not entirely clear how employers are supposed to act with freelance workers. And that complexity is, it, it's intentional. The reason it's intentional is it gives more power to government regulators, whether they're at the federal level in Washington, D.C., or here in California. The law is so vague that it will chill employers. They don't want to get fined. They don't want to find themselves on the wrong end of the regulators. So they have to go to the Department of Labor in Washington, D.C., or to the state legislature in Sacramento and ask for clarification. That could take months or years. And who wants the compliance burden of, of that kind of you know follow through on a process. It's supposed to be very simple. Um, I'll, I'll just make it you know really clear this way. The Trump administration in 2021 created a new Department of Labor law, a regulation, a rule they call it, that had only two factors to determine whether someone was truly an independent contractor and did not have to be hired as an employee. The two factors were that you controlled most of your work. There wasn't somebody leaning over your shoulder and telling you which buttons to push or which lever to pull. You're working primarily on your own. The second feature was that you had to be able to make a profit. It's very simple. The new Department of Labor regulation under Julie Su and Joe Biden, that document is 339 pages. 339 pages. I've read those 339 pages. It is baffling, contradictory, vague. It is almost impossible to understand. Uh, for those of us who have advanced degrees, we'll be shocked to find out that none of this makes sense to us. We thought we had something and we don't. We do not understand what this thing's all about. So again, I don't think that's an accident. The goal here is that vague regulation empowers the regulators against business and individuals. So if I'm a small business person, I, I just, I'm a photographer and I do a lot of freelance work for magazines, wedding parties, family functions, you name it. I am suddenly now required to try to plead with companies to hire me to do my work. Companies that are terrified of being caught by regulators doing something wrong. There's another benefit of this that was really kind of on the down low. When he signed this bill in 2020, or 2019 rather, Gavin Newsom said that one of the things this would do was that it would make sure that workers became employed by companies that were already unionized. Why is that important to Gavin Newsom? Because unions, union members pay dues, and those dues, when collected by the union, are pushed out to the campaigns of people like Gavin Newsom, who then run for office, and when they're elected, turn around and do favors for their benefactors, in this case, unions, right? So what this effectively does, this law, is increase the power of a few friendly corporations in California, now the United States, who recognize that their free market competitors, their non-union competition, will not be able to meet the complexity of working in a non-union environment anymore. This will absolutely hand a huge win to, court, to very large corporations and to Democrats. I don't know how else to put this, except that it is a weird relationship between what are supposed to be private businesses who are grifting off the Democrats and Democrats who are grifting off large corporations. As a guy who loves free markets and thinks the world of the American experiment, I find this really terrifying. Crush small businesses, enhance the power of big businesses, and empower regulators to have more authority over the lives of ordinary Americans. That seems like a lose, lose, lose.